Hello. Test. Can you hear me now? No? Yeah, I hear okay. a very low volume. And you okay. can hear me well? Yeah, the volume is good. Okay. Um, you're not Tyler, it... no, no, you're not Tyler. Is it better? There is Tyler. Better, if you can hey. put the volume a bit up, actually. Hello. I think I need to speak right in the microphone. Okay. Yeah. And my volume, how is it? It's good, yeah. Uh, at least in headphones. Okay, excellent. And now we need just to check the sound of the computer. Yeah? So what about if I play something on YouTube first? Um, ah, well, I need to share my screen, that's right. Screen. Uh, I need to be allowed to share. I got it. No? Yeah. So I share my desktop and I share sound. Stereo. <laughs> Let's see. Can you see my screen? Yes. Um, yep. John Cage. <laughs> we were just talking about John Cage uh, yeah. at my my uh, local algorithm meetup. What did he, your local algorithm? What? Yeah, uh, in in San Francisco, my friends and I were we're playing an algorithm next week, uh -huh. and we were joking of we were gonna put John Cage in the lineup as a joke. Yes, do it. Like what for thirty three? <laughs> yeah, he'll play the yeah. intermission. Yeah, fantastic. Well, because I'm, I'm going to talk about uh, loops, tape loops, and this is a famous piece of him in which he uses two loops. Can you hear that? This is the music? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's great. It sounds great. The level's great. Perfect oh, clear voice. Perfect. And then the next thing to check is if my my bitwig oh. is working so i'm gonna just do a sound check of the item my keyboard is sticky but it is I don't, it's not because it's dirty it's i don't know why sound is dry. It sounds like duplicated to me. How does it sound, the bass drum? You get it? No, I don't hear it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So let's see. I have my loop back, which is mm. sending. Maybe I turn off the monitor for me. I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. If I switch that microphone, can you still hear my voice? Are you yep. listening to me? I can hear you now. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Still listening to this. <laughs> I'm so glad you're both here. This is going to be awesome. I'm so glad to be here. Ah, uh, yeah, because I have here some, of course, I have some. Uh, reverberation but you can't hear it okay so let's fix that in the meantime i'm gonna message clarissa uh clearly reached out to her on twitter but i should reach out to her on discord just to see if she wants to do a soundtrack um, if i stop sharing the screen i'm gonna stop sharing to check why um it's not sharing my my mix um, ah, because maybe it's here. Hello, can you still hear me? 
I can hear your voice. Yeah. I can't hear you. Oh. Tyler or Ralph? Yeah. I can't hear you now. Please show me. Fiona? Can you talk to me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, now blah, I can blah, hear blah, you. Blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Hmm. Maybe I have to do some routing from my back. I'm going to share my screen in case you guys see my setup. It's too much. It's not working. Let's full screen with a quick thing. Advanced. Computer audio. Okay, mm. screen sharing. Turn on original sound, I think that's the thing. Oop. I can okay. only hear you from the right headphone now. Oh. Mm -hmm. Me? Yeah. My voice it's just uh it's just noise right like um the pink um, noise i have noise and your voice on the right headphone hmm. with white noise like my ambient noise yeah i think yeah. so okay that's i don't know how to get rid of it Do you hear clicking? Yeah. Your mouse? Oh, okay, cool. That's my boyfriend. <laughs> so it's the ambient sound. Hmm. Maybe if I take down the ambient volume of the mic, I could help. But then the noise, but. Can you hear the bass drum and the snare drum? No. Oh no, we have a problem. I'm going to um, to quit soon and uh, and come back. Yeah, I will call. I will join you in a few minutes. Mm, Taylor, I, I don't think I can, I think I can't hear you now. Oh, right, right, yeah. Yeah, better. I'm glad you got headphones on because you noticed the, the right channel only. Yeah. So when I plug in my headphones, you can't hear me anymore. So I guess I can't use headphones. Yeah, do you have stuff to check? Like, um, are you going to be sharing audio today? I don't think so. I don't think I will be talking for a long time, just like presenting the new website and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm excited. It's, it's awesome to meet you. Yeah, I, I've seen your your name in the forums and everywhere. It's, uh, it's always a bit weird for me to see people like, I'm used to see names on forums and chats, but like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know. You probably envisioned me as like this disembodied head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I kind of like, I like socializing through text online and stuff. It's, it feels right, especially when like, 
we have stuff to talk about, you know? Yeah, it's very practical also, like when, um, when English is not your first language, you have like time to think and time to, I don't know, just put stuff on the paper. And sometimes it can be helpful just to think about the problem you have right here. Yeah, you, uh, you're working on your PhD. Uh, um, yeah, I've, I've just started a PhD on live coding. I mean, um, I started like 10 months ago but um it's not very it's not going anywhere yet uh, oh yeah i mean yeah but it's always like that at least in france you have like some time to think uh for like one year and then they um they are chasing you with like a, a whip and like trying to get something out of you <laughs> like yeah who's your advisor um is uh, it's Laurent Potier. He's uh, from the um, UGN, so like it's um, Saint Etienne University. Um, he's um, specialized in a uh, lot of things actually, but mostly um, um, preservation and archives, like electronic music archives. So, like, yeah, preserving old technology, this kind of stuff. Hmm. Yes. Thanks. Yeah. All right. But there is a um, strange echo. It's normal. Mm, let's see. I stopped it. Yeah. So it's my voice. I think that we have we have title plus um, maybe the feedback from your uh, speakers or something like that. Mm. Yeah. It sounds kind of like gated reverb. Yeah. Okay. Let me check first if I share the screen again with the share sound. Oh, wait, wait, wait. When you're mm -hmm. doing share screen, mm -hmm. you click the share screen button, right? And then uh, yeah, there's you share see sound. in the bottom left. Uh -huh. And then you can click for options and you can do mono or stereo. Yeah, I chose stereo. Okay. All right, that's that's good to know for the future. Okay, my voice is fine now. Now let's check again, John K. Yeah. And then we go here. It has a reverb because uh, yeah, I have a I have it set up for, but I can. Let's see. Yeah, I have some reverb here here in this channel. Let's go to Transmanis, which one? Trans. Six. So if I do D6, maybe it sounds better than the reverb. Yeah? You hear it? Yeah, yeah it, it sounds better. But still weird? I think it's okay. I don't know. Um, it sounds like there is still um, a little bit of reverb or delay or something. But mm. honestly, it's, I think it's okay. I don't know. Uh, it depends if you need like precision. Or like, uh... No, not precision. No. I'm going to play this bass. Sounds good. Okay. And this since hmm? it's quite soft. Okay. I think we're done. We're ready. Yeah. So I start now. You start uh for the meetup? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. yeah. We're yeah, we're proposing 
Uh, just the same order that's on the Title Club website, just for simplicity. Yeah, that's very good. Yeah. So you're in San Francisco, Tyler? Yeah. How nice. I, I dream of San Francisco. I've never been there. It's pretty cool. You're in Berlin yeah. though, right? Yeah, but well, now I'm in between, between Berlin and Verona, because my boyfriend is in Verona. Verona? So in Italy? In Italy. The city of love, right? The city of love. It is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And how is the live coding scene in, in San Francisco? The live coding scene is, I don't know. It's, it's pretty cool. You know, Thorsten sideboards here and he, he invited you to the big algorithmic art assembly. That's the biggest thing that we've had here, uh, yeah. by and large, but mm -hmm. some some uh, friends I made through like the Hydra meetups and the Tidal Cycles meetups mm -hmm. live here and we're putting on an algorithm this week. So like, I don't know, I, I feel like it's pretty vibrant. Uh, there's a lot of coders, a lot of people who like electronic music here. It's just like ripe for cool stuff happening. Is there like a top lap San Francisco? I don't think so. No. It maybe would be good to make one. I That's think. a really good idea. Yeah. Oh, so wait, Clarissa, you're trying to do a sound check. Go for it if if you want. Like, totally. Don't don't worry about yeah, interrupting Yeah, mo mostly just... I just didn't want to interrupt the conversation. You know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. Yeah. <laughs> How, How are you doing, Clarissa? I'm all right. I'm all right. Um, you know, it's a Saturday morning for you and I here on the West Coast. Uh, but yeah, I can just share screen quick and then just double check that everything is okay on sharing my audio. Um, I do like, I do a lot of classes over Zoom. So I'd be kind of shocked if something like was just super wrong, but you never know. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, let's, okay. So now we do share sound and uh just i don't know ran let's just let's just choose like a random snippet uh doesn't really matter um nice it just works we can hear that okay great cool yeah that's that's sort of what i expected because i i have i've taught like intro title classes over zoom like for the community college for the past few months. No way, that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's been pretty cool. Where are you based? Uh, Portland, Oregon. Amazing. Yeah, do you know um, Spednar and Arsonist? Uh, we were uh, talking on Twitter about like how we should definitely like, um, I don't really know Spednor, but like we, we started talking on Twitter when I found out that uh, he was moving to Portland. And then it was just like, no way, like, because I've been trying to get like algo raves happening here and like, I've never had critical mass of people. And this is, this is way closer to critical mass now. So, yeah. And the same question to you, Clarissa, is there a top lab there in Portland? Uh, no. Um. Do you think? And I think it's such a uh, um, it's a good way to to get the community more, like co cohesion in the community somehow. Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely the kind of thing like we've wanted to do, but like I haven't been able like I've I've tried to like put out like feelers for stuff I've only maybe found like one other person uh mm -hmm. in before it's a there's not a lot of life coding in the city yeah that's so nice that you're teaching it yeah 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 um it's been it's been pretty cool bernard Hello. welcome hey how's it going you good <sighs> good everyone early Everyone is acoustically calibrated and ready to go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thanks for doing that. 
it's and, uh, um, yeah thank you for these meetups who came uh, up with the idea who came up with the idea oh, not me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I came up with the idea Excellent. but thank yeah cleary cleary brought this level of organization that just made this mm -hmm. this third meetup so much nicer to put together than the first two <laughs> No, um, yeah, I've really enjoyed them. I, I think they're really high value. So I thought, well, if I can do something to help, and, and I, I'm glad I did because we lost. The, I mean, it was really only Renzo and Tyler doing the doing the organisation, and we lost Rich this time. Have you heard from him yet? No, me neither. No He's, so the the other guy who helped with the organisation, with um, he had some health issues in his family and. And yeah, we lost him partway through. So I'm glad I glad I uh, was able to help. Yeah, we lost him from the organization meetings, <laughs> not from yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, the material I, I was, world. <laughs> I was assuming from tone that that was not. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, still early no. here. I'm... No, it was clear. I just wanted to make where a stupid, stupid joke. Uh, yeah, where are you, Chris? Uh, I'm in Australia. So it's, what time it's is 4 a, 4 a.m. almost. No. Oh, wow. That's wow. why I was a little bit late. I figured I'd try and get as much sleep as I could. <laughs> well done. That's why I'm also look like I'm in my pajamas. Mm. That's actually true. <laughs> nice pajamas too. You know what? I might actually go and change my shirt. Just hang on. Tyler, would you would you introduce us or yeah. yeah, like introduce anything and then, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna give the three of you an introduction. I should probably practice them a little bit in the like five minutes before we start, but uh, okay. I'm gonna stick to what's written on the title club page. Mm -hmm. Try to make it sound a little natural, but basically include all of that content. Does that sound cool? Okay. Sorry? Does that sound cool? Perfect, sounds super good. Oh my god, I'm so curious. But I have a dinner afterwards, so I won't be able to stay, but we are recording this, right? So I can see you afterwards. Yeah. But maybe after the dinner I can join you. Oh? Oh. There we go. Something that doesn't look so pajama y am I? Uh, no, the other one didn't look like a pajama. It's beautiful too. I knew the truth. <laughs> That's all good. All right. Well, this is quite relaxed, guys. Thank you again for putting some stuff together for us. It's too much. It's too much. Um, we need to, um, yeah, Tyler, you and I need to think about the next one. I think if we're going to try and make this. Well, we're thinking about, well, Tyler's mentioned trying to make it monthly. I think having a regular one is, is a great idea. The, um, the problem with doing it monthly is that we sort of need to be prepared to ahead at, at any time. So at the moment, we're not that, um, we're not in shape for that, but I think we can get there. Let's see how we go. Um, if anyone wants to, <laughs> Come and help us. We're, there's no there's no barrier to entry here, so it doesn't take doesn't take a lot of effort to be honest. It's just a um yeah. just a bit of planning. Yeah, I would love to help. It's just that sometimes yeah, I get me too. get confused with the times. I'm so sorry for last time. Don't worry about it. And so after August, I could probably help, um, but like my life is. Um, my life is a little wackadoo until until like September. But, yeah, no, but after it. that, I would love to to be involved in putting together a more regular meeting. Yeah, it's all good. I'm not I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. It's, oh um, no no no! I just yeah. I, it's it's mostly my self consciousness is that I I actually said yes, but after a time rather than just saying yes. So like. Um, 
Yeah, no, it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, like and, and even just some of the some of the stuff that we're you know need some ideas on is just you know presenters ideas on presenters. I'm gonna. I've, I've made a moonshot. I think um, it'd be really great to get. Or any blank, I'm still half asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, need to get clear. You need release, to the show in touch. Yeah, she, she released an album recently. Um, here we go. Do it in two seconds. Uh, present a wish list. Yeah, Beatrice Dillon. So I reckon that would be a, um, I don't know if you know, she did a, um, she did a really well-received album recently and um, used title cycles on it. And I reckon that would be pretty amazing to get her to, sorry, I'm also conscious now that I speak Australian, which is really fast, Beatrice Dillon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just checked out the new album. Pretty crazy. Hey. Um, but yeah. Hello. Hi guys. Hey, kids here. Hanging out in space. What's up, Bernie? How's it going? Hey, everybody. Good. good. There we go. Thanks for thanks for coming along. Tyler, you've got your agenda and everything sorted there. Yeah. Cool. Again, TH4, hi. Thomas, hi. Ted, Ty. I know all these people. <laughs> nice to see everybody. Jesus, Martin, that's the biggest glass of water I've ever seen. Right. Tyler, I think we should, um, I think we should aim to start right on the hour. What are your thoughts? Mm. Give it, give it five. How about a happy medium, like? Two or three minutes. Yeah. Easy go. No Discord problems this morning. Shoot, I need to put myself in the show and tell. I just noticed that we um, get the invite invitation link in the uh, Title Circles Club um, post, but not as e- an email. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. I think I might have mentioned that we were going to send emails in the in the meetup chat. Hmm. Now, oh, fingers crossed, our rang is here. That's who I told. Hello. So we're all good. Hello, hi Hello. everyone. Hello, hi, Simon. <laughs> hi, Tyler. Hi. hi, Fury. Hi. Hello. Hi, guys. Hello. Hey, Tish. For I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, Ranga, you're here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hello. <laughs> hello. How do you hey. it? Yeah. I'm staying awake. <laughs> <laughs> what, what time is it there? 
Um, it's 1 a.m. 1 a.m. right now. Mm. Not yeah, you're not you're not far off my um my time zone. It's 4 a.m. here. Oh, oh yeah. Maybe I will also stay until that. Uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I um I went to sleep. <laughs> All right. Um, doesn't really surprise me that there's not many Australians joining the stream. Yeah, you're you're pretty committed, Bernie. I I got to give it to you, man. You, the Aussies get a sh the short end of the stick with a lot of these uh, meetup times. Yeah. It's destroyed my sleeping habits. I got to tell you, but I enjoy myself. So. You get a lot of work done, and and you're um, you're active. And we all appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I think West Coast and Australia, or sorry, yeah, West Coast and Australia have it the roughest for these global things. All right, Bernard, I'm going to message you the the current um, spreadsheet with the show and tell data in it. I'm going to message you on Discord. Yeah. Okay. So it seems like everybody's mostly settled in here. Um, I think we should get started. So I'm very excited to introduce our first speaker, Alexandra Cardenas. Today, she's going to be discussing her music composition techniques, which includes the use of stochastic processes, randomness, and the talk will also go over how she draws inspiration from composers from 1940s through the 1970s who worked with tape loops. Alexandra is going to demonstrate how she applies these musical patterns to the diverse genres of music that she that she works with and produces, including techno, noise, and traditional electroacoustics music. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much, Tyna. Thank you everybody for being here, and thank you for organizing this beautiful meeting. I'm, I'm very sorry I couldn't come for to the last meeting, but I'm here now. And um, I want to, I'm, I'm a composer of classical Western music. And uh, one of the things as a, as a student that, that blew my mind was the use of tape loops. Um, I started studying electroacoustic music and this is one of, of the things that, that really, really influenced my musical thought. Um, because I always thought of music as patterns even when I didn't know the word patterns. I always thought like, like music was something more circular than linear. And I think that's why I'm here because Tidal Cycles was the perfect tool for me through the years as a composer when I discovered, wow, I can do, I can do pa repeating, I can do cycles and, um, and transform my patterns without being just a, a simple looper, no? But uh, the, actually, the simple looper was the, the beginning of many things for my for my musical development and like finding my voice, thanks to to the idea of loops. So I thought, uh, well, since in terms of code and programming, I'm not such a I, I can't I, I can't give um, you will see that my code is quite simple. But I, what I can offer in this meeting, I think, is is my a bit of the composition history of electro electroacoustic music, and this is what I'm telling you. Uh, of course, first I, uh, I recommend to you if you're interested just to take a look at tape loop in Wikipedia. I actually think it's a good, it's a very good and very co complete um, article in Wikipedia. Um, so tape loops uh, of my magnetic tape are used to create repetitive rhythmic musical patterns or dense layers of sound when playing on a, on a tape recording. Originated in the 40s with Pierre Schaeffer 
which is, I think it is a very important name for us, all the fuzz in electronic music, no matter which, which school we come from, because uh, thanks to him we started discovering the recording of sound as a, as a musical element. And um, thanks to him we started uh, recording sounds and, and using them as, as um, a, a musical instrument, as a musical element. And here you will see a list of contemporary composers in this time that if you're interested you can go deep. I'm trying just to be very, very general because we don't, I only have 20 minutes, but I can talk about this for hours because I love it. Um, but I think the, the, the thought behind the tape loop is actually um, what gave uh, for instance, things like tidal cycles uh, and origin, no? it, it, it shares the same idea of, of repetition and we as algorithms know that uh, we, are, we love repetition. And um, it, what happened then was weird in the, in the Western school, classic school, that repetition was for a while not very well seen. Uh, it was actually frowned upon. But then we had people like Steve Reich who, who actually he was considered not part of the of the academy for a while, but uh, with the minimalism, um, with the, uh, academic music started like opening its eyes again uh, to to the repetition. And uh, I want to show you uh, examples of composers that are important to me. And as usual in the history of music, women are left out <laughs> from the history. So I will show you a couple of, of uh, composers. Well, at least Elian Hadik is, is shown here. And another one, uh, another article that I think is good if you're interested in, in entering the story of this, this part of our electroacoustic music story is from uh, this blog, CDM link, the story of early tape music. Um, he also, Peter, Peter Kern, who is uh, from the States and lives in Berlin now. He's the one who made this beautiful block. It's very important, actually. Though I think sometimes he left a lot of women out. <laughs> but um, it doesn't mean that it's not important what he says here. He also talks about the Euro rack, but um, uh, I'm, I'm not going to about talk about it today. I want to talk about this, the Second World War and the origins of tape. Because this is what... Uh, of course, sound was recorded way before this, but it was thanks to the technology implemented in the war, in this war, that we can have what we have now. So here, uh, I find this very, very interesting. In the Second World War, the Allies are confused. They think they know the location of Hitler, yet every time they listen to the broadcast on his live speech, it turns out it's being broadcast from another city, not the one he's supposed to be in. Because uh, in this moment, Germans started to use a much, much advanced uh, recording technique with tape. So it sounded very different to what it was before that we were using cylinders and discs. Now with tape, we have another quality of sound. And it's not only the quality, but it's that we have a tape, which is a very tangible thing. And we can, the, uh, once after the war, and the tape was liberated, let's say, it was it started being used, used by artists. Uh, then we started, they started taking this tape and actually physically cutting it down, putting it backwards, chopping it, things that we use it in, in, in tidal cycles now, you know? But this is the beginning of this idea. So that's why I think for, for tidal cyclers, it's so important to take a look at two tape loops and the history of tape loops. Because we can also, well, if you know where you come from, you have uh, much power, no? As, as with everything. But also we will have more ideas and we will understand, ah, this is why can, we can create uh, some uh, different effects. We will have more tools to have new ideas and making different uh, effects and different. So uh, anyway, uh, Pierre Schaeffer here. He's one of the first who started with the recording, as I told you before. And um, he and uh, Pierre Henry, as, so Pierre Chauffeur is, is an engineer. He 
he comes from a musician's family, but he was not actually a musician in the sense that, of, of course, for me, he's one of the greatest musicians, but he, uh, he was not declared a musician with a diploma or so. But it doesn't mean you can't be a musician. And he uh, worked a lot with Pierre Henry, who was a diploma, diploma composer. So actually they made, a, um, the, these two um, characters are super important for, for us as, as electronic musicians. They created wonderful pieces. Uh, I want to play a little bit of Pierre Schaffer. <laughs> So he recorded trains and he made a piece of art of music with the recordings of the trains. It's beautiful to take a look at his work. He named this, this kind of music, he called it musique concrète, which is also very important for us because uh, we can create, uh, it's not only the samples of the synthesizers, we, do, we can make music, we can record anything and we can make music in Tidal Cycle. So this is a very important thing to visit. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, I had something else. So, um, of course, as I was saying, the tape is something so, um, so malleable. They started creating machines so, um, where you Building can structures. So I'm going to try to cut out the um. You can so cut the tape structure. with different and shapes. Might be a little bit of, uh, and uh, this gives the sound a completely different quality word word, every but, uh, time. So you can create music can with this, this different okay, parameters. So, so what we're doing with code, they were doing right it with knife and tape, like vertical. putting together the pieces of tape. We'll play it again. Structure to the vertical, and also playing okay. slow, uh, playing now, at different speeds we'll do what we call as we do in tidal cycles. No. Okay, so, so the first one is there is a lot. Of, it, of course, it needs a lot of training to to get the cuts right. But splicing, that's also we do. So it's a technique we do in tidal cycles. So we cut the tape with a knife, and then glue it. And what happens then if we uh, we can with we can make a delay, no? If we make a one loop go a little out of phase, reversing the sample in the tape is super important. This was very used in, by many many composers. Um, Germany, Thomas. So of course we have um, different composers like uh, Stockhausen. And of course, I will show you later John Cage. But I, I want to jump to this because I want to show you. The, I want to show you this um, um, article on Yanis uh, um, Senakis because he started. He apart from from making a lot of wonderful things with mathematics and architecture, he also. Um, used a lot of granular synthesis. So what happens if we cut the tape literally with so very, very little samples, and then we put them together, we create a whole new sound, no? And that's what we do now with our computers very easily, but, but then it was very complicated. But thanks to the computers, we can, we can use this synthesis in, a, in an easy, easier way. I mean, I mean, it's easy, but we don't have to cut the tape so, so small. And, oh my god, let's go, I'm running out of time. So, uh, yeah, you can take uh, face, uh, YouTube, of course, you can find a lot of things. And just because uh, some women composers were not mentioned in, in this couple of articles, I, I want to remind you that Daphne Aram, she used a lot of, um, she worked with Musique Concrète, and she used a lot of uh, tape, and she did wonderful pieces, so I want to recommend you to see that. Same as Eliane Radic. And of course, it's not only the, the looping exactly, but you can make feedbacks and you can make a, as delays, no? We can make a, so many things with the tapes. So I want to give you these names. Here, for instance, Senakis recorded the, the ensemble and then he started using some granular synthesis on top of it with tape. 
this is uh, analogic A and B for strings and tape. And these techniques that were used in the 50s, 60s, we're still using them, no? So, so I think this is like a ABC for, for electronic uh, composers. That's why I wanted to show you this. Now there's a figure that is uh, super important for me as a composer, and it's uh, Steve Reich. He's a, a composer from the US. And he used a lot of repetition and patterns. He's one of the so-called minimalist composers. He's probably the most famous one, along with Terry Riley and uh, Philip Glass. And here he explains that he went to Ghana. Them down. I was working at the same time with tape loops that produced It's Gonna Rain and Come Out, those pieces of mine. And uh, I thought, wow, these African music patterns going over again, they're like tape loops. So I got very interested in, in African music by reading, seeing the notation, hearing recordings, and seeing the analogy between what I was doing with tape and what Africans were doing with drums. So all roads pointed, I should go to Ghana. Music was not... Uh... Okay, he went to Ghana, and, and if you hear his pieces, um, I have one here. Yeah, he recorded, for instance, he was in, in the street. I think he was in San Francisco, actually, when he recorded this. He was recording a preacher in the street who said, it's going to rain. And then he recorded him and started playing with two It was 1965, I was in San Francisco. I had recorded a black Pentecostal preacher preaching about the flood of Noah in a park in San Francisco. One of the moments when I recorded the, the preacher, uh, he said, it's gonna rain. And as he said that, a pigeon took off. Pigeon drummer. I brought the tapes home and I started editing them and cutting them into tape loops. For those of you who don't know what a tape loop is, it's a piece of uh, audio tape glued together so it goes around and around and around. So I, I put this, that's fantastic. So I wanted to do, I thought I had two tape recorders and I said, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to get it into a relationship so you're going to hear it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to rain, 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 rain. So let's hear a bit of the piece. Someone made a hero visualization. I go into trance when I hear this music. And it's just two loops out of our face, no? That we can very easily do in tile cycles with notch or with. And uh, just uh, because, as I said many times, women are so not talked about in the history, I recommend a lot to you. Uh, the newest sister with transistors is a documentary about women, women in electroacoustic music that is so, we are missing it a lot. And this is a very good uh, movie, so uh, documentary. So if you Google it, I think you can watch it. Maybe you pay one euro or one dollar or one, a bit of money and uh, you can you can see this and, and see how many women have been using tape tape recordings and this is well just from the point of view of the classical uh, western music but we have had this in rock in uh, pop music tapes have been very important um, um yeah okay too much but yeah many women composers that i could uh, we can see and just a little, just wanted to show you the, the first piece where John Cage used, actually they say that, some people said he was the first DJ <laughs> because he had two, two recordings and he was just taking them out of phase. So a, a bit of this piece so you can see how they can be used as musical instrument in, in a classical Western music as part of an ensemble. Okay, because 
we're running uh, short on time, but yeah, John Cage is a figure that I, I think has a lot um, of... Um, we, we are in the same frequency, life coders and, and him. Uh, so I recommend a lot reading because as life coders we are making generative music live. So what it means, and actually that's what my research is about, what it means to be in control. We're not writing music linearly anymore. We're writing music that changes with time. We're, we're setting the behaviors on which music is born, born by itself. No? It's like we're planting seeds and then the music uh, takes a life on their own. So with all of that, is, I want to show you now my code. Um, yeah, I feel a bit bad because I, I haven't studied tidal cycles and the new functions. I haven't had the chance. But I, have, I feel very comfortable with this idea. I write, for instance, let me show you this one, which is a, is a mix of Celeste Betancourt, like a life coder from Colombia. And she wrote this piece and she gave me the, the stems so I could make a, make a, um, a remix. For instance, here's the bass. So as you can see, what I do is that, let's say I put my bass basically say I don't want it to sound this uh, because I'm thinking about techno and I'm thinking about make people dance and the 16, 16 bases is like a, our common ground for that so I'm trying to think more in like for two bass but I, I always go out of that but it's like my base to, to start doing things if I don't want it to sound the 16 times let's say I want to sound four times out of 16 so this part of the code, you will see, you know, my code. It's like when, how much I want of that sample, no? I, I have my sample. I, I want it, let's say, half of the time at this speed. And then where I have my, mostly my, my stochastic random process is in choosing the, the sample. So I can tell, okay, now in this part, I want to choose this other, the next sample of my bass also the speed but the speed in the bass since I'm intending to make people dance in this case I want to let the bass quite stable but let's say I want to trigger you see the same same structure with the horns no here for instance I have for some reason I think about this in 12 and I have my Ojos Tres sample but sometimes I want it to sound at double the speed so instead of doubling the speed of my tape loop I let Tidal Cycles to choose when to do that you know? and then I can play with textures just by changing the speed of it so by changing the speed and the and the the speed of the sample and the speed of the repetition of the sample, I have already nice textures. I think they're nice. And this is how I basically, you see, it's quite simple. I just activate this when mode const silence is my switch. No? And this is, uh, so this is, for instance, when well, let's say, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm out, of, out of time. But so this is when I, when I, this is an algorithm set for me and, and this is what I've been playing mostly and actually in, a, in, a, in electroacoustic festivals and electronic festivals they ask me for an algorithm set so I have been playing this a lot. But I, I come more like, a, the, not more, but the beginning of my, my career was more something like a, a, a noise and a abstract sounds. I would do something like this, let's see. So 
I have already set a range and used Perlin here, still letting it choose uh, which sample, right? because I love those surprises. I want it more dense, of course, I, I go, okay, send me one each cycle, but if I want more time... Mm -hmm. Here is a singer, for instance. Shame, I have two samples, I tell you to choose among them. And here I am changing the, the speed with the purlin and the filter. And the pan is right. So it's quite basic stochastic process, but uh, that's how I write my music. And if you see my scores before the before I, I was a live coder, are very much um, are very much this, but written with notes, you know, with a, with a pentagram. And, but this is for me the best way. I'm the composer and I set up where I want surprises. I don't know exactly which speed is going to come now, but I know more or less the general behavior. So that's it. I just wanted to show you that. And I think we have six minutes for questions, if you have any questions. Oh, I'm missing the chat because I'm sharing. chat on this time Ooh, sorry but also you can open your microphone and ask anything if you want um alexandra i have a question yeah um last the last lead up we had um uh Kindome was um talking about like a lot of his compositional stuff is um he'd write the code and then write hooks in for all his MIDI stuff um, and it, uh, have you done any experiments with hardware in that in that similar way because it looks like it, it looks like a, a good format you're like it's such a super simple layout and, and concept but the, the sound is really effective have you have you looked into um, hardware controls as your as your performance um, yeah. tool I have never used a, a synthesizer. I'm interested in, but I think uh, um, it's like I, I never had the money before to buy a, a synthesizer. That's the main reason. Yeah, no, sorry. What I mean um, is not uh, a not a synthesizer, but a MIDI um, CC control. Like you can, yeah, you can dial in your, you can dial up mm -hmm. your speed and dial down your speed. Okay, but that relates a little bit because I, I I was like at the beginning in a mindset that I only had money for my computer and I didn't have money for thing, anything else. So I was like yeah. very very strict in that sense and also that's why only open source you know uh, yeah, but then I, I, was, I was so so attracted to the software and the thinking of software I consider myself a software musician that for me is so weird not uh, like I, I would get too distracted you know I tried to actually I tried to I did I presented a piece in 2017 no 15 oh my god in, in Leeds when we had the conference in Leeds I made a piece with electric guitar and I was like, oh, I don't have enough hands to life code and play guitar. So I will make, uh, I, I, I hacked Ixilang because it has an auto code. So I hacked it to, to, so the computer was coding itself. I just set it up with future, the future function and the computer was uh, behind me was showing the computer and it was uh, triggering effects and it was triggering different sounds. So I could use the guitar freely. And that's the most I have been able to do, but that's something I really want to look into the future. Um, but I, I, I'm so passionate, even if it's very simple, I'm super passionate about the, the software in itself. Yeah, that's yeah, super cool. What, actually, what, was the, um, what was the language you used, Ixilang? Ixilang by Thor Magnusson, Ixilang 
without the, okay. the period is my keyword is failing for um, my sound. why is it maybe i have a bug or something but uh, my space bar is also sometimes not working well, good thank you uh, and and my my performance was called feed forward now that alex mentioned it because also he wrote a piece of which, software with the same name. That, I was about to say which one came first. There, there it is. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed the, 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 the chat before. But yeah, so yeah, I, I, want, to, I want to look into, into different uh, ways to control. Mm -hmm. I will do it little by little. And I, I saw also Mike's Mike's uh, talk here in the meetups, uh, and it's yeah, it's it's masterful. I really want to look into it, and also with the electric guitar. Let's see if I can manage to control some parameters. That's been one of my dreams. <laughs> Alex, sorry for borrowing your name. <laughs> beautiful name. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Can you hear me? Alex? Yeah, very well, a bit distant, oh, good. actually. Super loud. Oh, um, yeah, I'm not sure if I can fix that. <laughs> this is better. Um, yeah, I was just kind of thinking about tape music, how um, long it took people to make tape pieces. And I'm wondering if people still do it, if you know. Yeah. Um, and if you and also I was wondering if there could be an interface for Tidal that was that slow, like it would take you maybe a year to make a, a pattern or something, and whether that would kind of change how we think about it and how we work with it. Um, like because these thinking. things did take that long, didn't they? Or at least months, I'm not sure. Yeah, it takes so long. I, I have seen in Berlin a couple of, uh, of artists using it, uh, experimental artists, but of course I haven't seen it used with precision and trying to make rhythms or anything, no? Uh, but it would be fantastic, no? What do you mean with uh, it would take long to reproduce one title cycle's pattern in the tape? <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, I, I guess once computers were, came along, people tape tape music kind of um, wasn't really done so much but um, I'm just wondering what's been lost by that process because it seems like a really focused craft to really work with sound by chopping up tiny bits like doing granular synthesis with tiny slices of, and um, actually i have never done it i just saw it at the university like a teacher was teaching me and uh, but it somehow did that's why i feel so comfortable with the samples here you know because i'm looping the samples but then yeah i've seen also these artists in berlin for instance they were taking the, the they were recording at the same time and they took the the tape very very long and used even sticks to, to take the, the tape along uh, the whole room and uh, it was incredible effects that you can make with this. Yeah, it just makes me think that we, we should get um, a version of Tidal Looper that has real loops like this. Oh <laughs> Amazing, <God>. wouldn't it? <laughs> fantastic, it would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's super expensive to talk about the money. But yeah, like like finding these rolls. I don't think they produce them anymore. As someone said Heinbach has done some nice things recently. I saw it today actually, didn't I have it here? Uh, maybe I closed it already. Yeah, but I found this this um, yeah with tape. I there there's people using it. It would be nice to mix it somehow with time. How did you find the um, my how can we call it analogy, Alex, with the tape loops and tail cycles? Um, yeah, yeah, just uh, has made me think a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I haven't really thought about it before. Surprisingly, it seems like a very nice, clear analogy. Um, I thought a bit about turntablism before. Mm. Um, 
and how that has a kind of progressive cycle built in. Um, and but the way that you manipulate time on a turntable, you don't have that kind of control with tidal and that, that you can't really pattern, you can pattern cycles per second now, but it's not quite the same as sort of <laughs> moving time backs and forwards. Um, but yeah, somehow I, I think maybe, yeah, that, I, I'm not really sure, but I think Tidal probably is closer to tape than turntablism because it does. It is so much about cutting things up and creating patterns with slices yeah. of time. Yeah, perfect. But yeah, I've never done it either. Maybe we should get together and maybe, we maybe just with like tape. cassette tapes, you can you can get old cassette tapes and do some more things with that. I think it'd be fun. Wow, Alex, <laughs> let's let's do that. <laughs> Alex, Alex, our duo goes tape. <laughs> yeah. Because we have a duo called Alex, right, Alex? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be beautiful. Um, but somehow I, I feel. Uh, yeah. Sorry? <laughs> no, go on. Okay. Uh, uh, first of all, this whole music concrete and. Uh, and and uh, tape loop uh, inspired me um, or was the inspiration for this whole looper stuff. Uh, and this why I say, uh, think this energy is something uh, I found really clear in the past too. And we had a small conversation on Instagram and I wanted to ask you whether you made, maybe this is a little bit out of scope here, but did you make your um, drone voice experiment? I could, I didn't make it work. I couldn't make it work. So I ended up doing this, which is the technique that I use the most, like exactly this. This is the piece that I made exactly for the, for the drum. But that's, I, I really want to do, I don't know why I couldn't make it work. Maybe if you could help me to see what is, um, because yeah, there was a point where the installation didn't work, but I can't wait. Also, we could say I want to use the guitar and the voice. Yeah, yeah sure. Uh, I, uh, I, would uh, I would glad uh, to help you. And uh, I think this is so, it is a very good idea to try drone music <laughs> in this way. And uh, your um, guitar performance looks very interesting too, so I will uh, listen to it later. Thank but you. it's very inspirational. Thank, oh, you. thank you. That was, yeah, and Dixie Lang is a, is a beautiful piece of software, no, Alex? It's, uh, it's very. It, it was built up on top of Super Collider to simplify it, to, to be able to live code in a more simple manner uh, but it's yeah the only thing is that it works only on on mac i think it works also on linux but definitely not on windows and that's, uh, that's uh, uh okay but it yeah it's wonderful yeah my my actually my original idea that i should do with that piece um mm -hmm. thank you with that piece was that I could, because in Super Collider, I, before I started live coding, I was uh, using my, well, playing electric guitar with Super Collider, with the, the effects that I wrote in Super Collider. And my idea, because I made a frequency follower and a volume follower, I wanted to be able to, to control my effects with the frequency and the volume. So I want, I want in the end, like in the future, that was my proposal for the conference, but I, did, I was too far away from it. I want that whenever I, ha I, I, I play certain notes at a certain volume, some snippets of code write themselves and, and uh, are um, com compiled, you know? Like if I play a very high E note and, and then Ixilank or Tidal sends me uh, something. You want to do this with a real guitar, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, I did some uh, little experiments uh, on this side too, but never published anything in this direction. But maybe uh, we can exchange. <laughs> yes, that was please. That would be wonderful. That would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, let's do that. All right. Pixie Lang. What is Pixie Lang? <laughs> what is it? Oh, 
Well, actually, like I, I remember that, the, like I saw this software called Sunfox, and this I think it's like developing this software using this languages called Pixelang, and I thought that Excel like actually the same. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Well, so this is how oh. I have been using like data cycles. Uh, any more questions? I think uh, we should probably take any remaining questions for Alexandra, have them in the chat, and then we can follow up on those offline or maybe, yeah, maybe like later in the meetup. But I think you have to run in a little bit, Alexandra. Yeah, I have to go at nine. Yeah. Cool. Well, so. Um, I'm going to give a brief overview of the rest of the meetup today. We don't Thank have as many so show and tell. Yes. <laughs> Thanks so much, Alexandra. <laughs> I guess we should, yeah. Now, uh, yeah, we, we have about seven or so show and tells. And we're going to split them up in half just to break things up. That will be interspersed between the other speakers. So let's do about four show and tells right now. And I'm just going to do them in the order that they appeared on the, the sign up sheet. Let me just double check, make sure I'm not forgetting anything else. Uh, I guess for the, the next speakers, we'll do. Uh, We'll save 10 minutes for questions as we did for uh, Alexander's talk. Um, show and tells will be, well, let's shoot for two minutes for each one. Okay, uh, our first shower and teller is Bernard. He wanted to show off the weekly live streams. Yeah, so I just, I'm gonna give a plug to the, um, the weekly estuary collaborative live, live streams that we run. Um, there's two sessions that run, we try to fit in um, most people's time zones. Um, they're heaps of fun. We have anywhere from two to eight or 10 people showing up and, and making some craziness. It's, um, yeah, it's good fun. So I, I like to record it um, and, and share it so that we've got something to refer back to. And yeah, there's no, there's no, I mean, you, you need to have some, some title, some title uh, basics under your belt, but yeah, it's like just heaps of, heaps of learning and heaps of fun. So I welcome anybody who's interested to come and join us. And that's all I got. Oh, didn't you also want to show this highlight here? Yeah, sure. He's, he's one of them. So this is, there's five of us in here and I think everybody's in this meeting, oh, except for Jeff, Crashing Boots not here, but. Um... I'm not getting any audio. The, um... I think I was doing the visuals that day, so it's a nice, uh, nice plug for my my crappy punctual skills. All oh, good. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, let's, let's hear it. Uh, here we go.
Yeah, look, it's it's super organic. It's not we don't we don't plan anything. Occasionally we have a quick chat about if anybody's got anything they want to try on the day, but it's it's very it's very casual. So yeah, as I said, I welcome anybody, any skill level, come and have a jam with us. All right, Alex, this is your show and tell, I believe. All right, yeah, I, I was trying to remember what I linked to. Um, yeah, I guess uh, I linked to this because um, I just thought it'd be nice to talk at some point about how to make Tidal Community more sustainable. Um, for a while, I've had my Kofi coffee link on the front of Tidal website getting crowdfunding donations which has been really handy um but i'm gonna stop um stop that because i'll be um working full time from december um and it's sort of a good moment anyway getting more and more contributions from people to the documentation and to the code and so it'd be nice to think about how to um just have some kind of thing for receiving money and giving money out to people who want who need it for developing something or for doing like we at the moment we've got a nice um uh, google summer of code thing going with martin but maybe it'd be nice to um ha be more sort of uh, non-reliant on on these mega corporations and just uh, use these crowdfunding donations to do that kind of thing and just have a some kind of process where we decide where, what to do with this money and, and yeah. Um, so yeah, I was just flagging this up that this open collective thing um, takes care of receiving money so that you don't have to ha have your own bank account. You don't have to um, have, be a non-profit institution or anything like that. You can just receive money and then sort of collectively decide what to spend it on. So I'm just flagging that. So maybe over the next couple of months, we can sort of get something like this going and, and decide um, how to take that forward. So if anyone's sort of interested in sort of forming some kind of um, group of people who decide what to do about this, then um, hit me up and we can, we can have a chat about it or something. Also, while I'm here, uh, I just want to link to this event that's happening on Friday, my time in five days, basically, or six days. Um, it's an event streaming from Birmingham in the UK. It's the end of a project that um, Antonio Roberts has been running. Um, I've been involved with as well, doing some tuition called Algo Afro Futures, supporting early career black artists in Birmingham in uh, seeing where, what they want to do with Tidal. Um, and uh, there's four artists who have been doing some really amazing things. So um, I recommend joining this live stream. Or if you're near Birmingham, then um, there is an event bright as well where you can actually come and show up if um, if uh, the um, lockdown uh, allows. <laughs> but uh, in any case, you can watch from home. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks, Alex. And then let's do, I guess, one more show and tell before we move on to Raph's talk. This is, uh, is El Food. Hi, yes. Hey. Yes. Hi, everyone. How's it going? Great. Well, um, that video um, was a set I did for a festival. Uh, called the Spectro Variable, uh, Variable Spectrum, I guess. Uh, it's a Peruvian uh, festival of uh, sound art and experimental music and that stuff. And it was, uh, my set was an improvisation where I did some live looping. I ran uh, pure data patches in my laptop as well as in my organelle for synthesis and sound processing. And I played some electric guitar processed by the uh, PD patches. And from Tidal, I did some, I sent 
some MIDI, CC, and stuff to the organelle, uh, for the synths mainly, and also some samples and super collider synths uh, from Tidal. Hope I didn't blast your ears. stuff if you know him uh, from battles and Don Caballero yeah so let me take one quick look at our agenda make sure I'm not missing anything all right well thanks for show and tell uh, the three of you, that was awesome. Let's uh, pivot towards Raph's talk, uh, Raphael Formant. So Raphael, he has been contributing quite a lot to revamping the title website and the documentation system. We're very excited to have him on board to formally introduce the new titlecycles.org webpage discuss how we can contribute and improve the documentation of title cycles, as well as how to, uh, he'll also talk about uh, the importance of the documentation and the archival systems for live coded art forms, which is something that is central to his recently started PhD. Right. Take it Hi. away, Raf. Thanks, um, can anyone hear me? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, so my name is Raphael. I'm now known as like the documentation guy for title. Um, um, what can I say about me? Um, so I'm a 26 year old life coder and um, a musicologist. So I was, I studied musicology for quite a long time without thinking much about computers and I would say three or four years ago, I discovered live coding uh, by studying things about John Cage, Brian Hino, and all this kind of stuff like generative process, um, tape loops. So yeah, and um, so I felt that it was important to uh, collect as many information as possible about live coding as a um, like performance culture as an art and as a, um, a technique um, and I tried to I know like yeah basically I started to archive a lot of things and I tried to learn how to program uh, how to make software how to live code and how to make computer music um, so yeah I started working on, um, on a PhD 
um, 10, 10 months ago about live coding. It's still a bit blurry, but it will be mostly about two things. The first one being trying to understand what live coding is. And I mean by that, like the historically, like trying to go from the roots of the of, um, computer music and see where does live coding comes from, both as a nice technical thing, like a technique also. And I'm trying to see if we can use live coding for basically everything. <laughs> what I mean by that is like um, archiving stuff, teaching electronic music and computer music, um, just using live coding as a main interface for computer music and for yeah, basically making music with computers. And it's been it, it's very fun actually, and I, I enjoy it a lot. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm not a computer scientist or like a software de developer, and I don't produce music actually. Like I don't release uh, things, music on Bandcamp and YouTube or anything. Um, I like to think about myself as like some kind of academic life coder because I don't make music. I just talk about music, <laughs> and uh, it's still a lot of yeah. It's um, it's still a huge task, um, and. I have a lot of fun developing software around Tidal, but not mostly in, um, I mean, I've created like um, a Python library to play with Superdot, but it's not Tidal, but it looks like Tidal because it speaks with uh, Superdot, like, yeah, so funny things like that. And um, recently I tried to improve the Tidal Cycles documentation. Maybe I can share my screen so you can see the, the website. Um, so let me see, boom, I don't need sound. Can anyone see my screen now? Yep. Yep. Okay. So this is the new title website. Um, actually the only thing I did was like putting the informations in because this website was already online, but it was a uh, kind of empty shell. Um, there was some Actually, there was quite a lot of work already. Like people worked on it; it was working well. There was some people that uh, did like bulk imports, so, like trying to grab data from the old documentation, putting it in the new uh, documentation. Um, but yeah, there was the task of organizing all this knowledge and trying to make it fun, so yeah, people can. Um, use it actually make it usable for people um and i try i try to make that the best i could but the problem is that i'm uh, i wouldn't say that i'm i am the only one that's worked on it but like i um it was very hard to do something that was not just what i think is the best documentation to, but like doing a useful uh, documentation for anyone. So trying not to uh, organize things like I would like to see them, but like all the community would like to see it. Um, and the reason I, I worked on that, it was because I, I tr I've tried in the past to translate basically everything on the old documentation from English to French, but there was some problems, for instance, like a, a very well, um, index page inflation, as I call it, because when you translated something, there was like a new page that appeared in the, in, on the index, index page. And it was becoming um, strange for like English speakers to see the same page listed 10 times with like uh, German, uh, French, Italian, Japanese. And so, yeah, it was a cool project. Um, but I also found that the old documentation was very fragmented with only one information on one page. And so I did the opposite thing. I've tried to create like monolithic pages uh, for everything. So I'll quickly um, show you the new website and what I call a monolithic page. For instance, if you go like in the, in the documentation section and let's take OSC, there is now like one huge page with a long list of subtopics about OSC and what you can do with OSC and everything. I think that everything is here, but like it, I think the next 
to the next big project will be to read everything and to see if everything is there. But like, I think that 90% of it, of the, all the information is here. Um, and so basically um, there is three sections. There is the blog section with nothing in it because it's supposed to be a blog, but um, I mean, it was not um, a topic that people talk about in the community, but maybe we can use this section to, to I don't know, publish like um, things about what's new in every each release. Like if someone wants to uh, talk about what he's doing with titles, like doing some kind of um, artistic documentation in some way. Um, so yeah, where is this empty block section? Where is the reference section that is um, kind of web, but also very useful. And um, it's um, it's a fragmented version of the documentation section that you can see up here. Um, because there is like a mini tutorial for everything. For like, for instance, I extended like the mini notation thing, uh, all the audio effects as I call them. And there is like the controversial reference section where I tried to sort every title function into categories. But um, yeah it's hard to tell what a, a function title is doing because it's very versatile. You can do many things in many different ways. So I've tried to create sections like concatenation, accumulation, alteration, and um, obviously it's not uh, the best possible organization. So that's one way people can contribute. It's just read these pages and say that I know uh, this function W choose is not in the right place, so I will move it somewhere else where I think it's um, uh, it fits better. Um, so yeah, so that's one one point. Like the the, the categorization of functions is very well, and uh, that's something that that is important to work on. Also, like if you look at transitions, the um, the page about transitions on the old documentation was wasn't um, complete. Was like a, a bit cryptic. So I tried to, you see, like raise this thing like more about transitions because I actually don't know much about transitions in, in title. I'm I'm just like transitioning by changing from a button to another. Um, yeah, and um, so. The way I think about it is like documentation is everything about title that is not the library itself. Um, what I mean by that is um, if you have something to say about, for instance, uh, Ascale, where is an, an, a section about Ascale here. If you have something to say about like the, the culture or the um, aesthetics uh, around title, you can go in around title and you have, for instance, the top left manifesto, this kind of thing, title history with uh, this text from Alex, uh, change log. Um, so everything that, that is title rate rated, but that is not title itself goes here. And reference is mostly for, um, okay, uh, tell me um, where, I mean, tell me, the, the, give me the whole list of functions and let me see what I can do using titles like, um, and I think, I like this way of organizing things because you can discover very quickly um, new functions and well functions. For instance, I don't know, let's go to sampling. I've never used, for instance, I don't know, discretize or things like that, uh, rent slides. And yeah, it's, I think it's easier to um, browse the um, documentation in that form. So yeah, um, and if you look, Closer, you can see that the documentation is very incomplete. Uh, I was not very good at finishing uh, this project uh, because for instance, yeah, you've seen the transition page, but there, is, there are a few pages where things are, yeah, you can tell that I wasn't very serious and for instance, like just the titles and subtitles and nothing in it. So yeah, um, I mean, the game for the community will be to just browse this website and um, if you think that you know more than the documentation just go and do something about it because um, title is now a very huge uh, software and like there is so many things to say about it that yeah i don't know um 
and yeah, I was also supposed to talk about like archiving stuff because it's a documentation, but it's a bit more than documentation. As you can see, there is like uh, pages about the community, there is a showcase page. And um, I think it will be nice to use um, the documentation as a way to archive performances. For instance, like if you have materials that you want to put there for, I don't know, like audio samples, um, super collider setups, scene definitions, uh, things like that. It would be nice to put them here so they can have like a, so they can have um, a second life. And um, yeah, and in general, it's a very, I mean, archiving stuff, it's a big topic. And I don't think that it was um, discussed a lot because it's very complicated to archive live coding. Um, okay. Yeah, so basically, um, let me see what, yeah, okay. There isn't, um, there is no format to exchange title performances. For instance, you, you can't just send an email to a friend um, saying, yeah, this is something I did with title and uh, take a look at it. Sometimes it's very complicated because there are, there are like uh, MIDI or OSS synthesizers, there are um, audio samples, there are very specific functions that work for your performance, but that are not shared by anyone. So one thing that would be cool as a, as a project for this documentation is finding a way to uh, exchange performances. And I know it's very hard, but it will be nice to have it. For instance, like saving um, what's the title side of things, like the improvisation. And what I mean by that is saving also the improvisation while the musician is walking. For instance, like saving the text at regular intervals. So you can see the progression from nothing to something. And actually it's, it fits very well in documentation because um, it's a very didactic way of seeing like, oh, do you work with title and oh, you do you do something with title. It's so like you start from scratch and you see people moving forward and um, life coding and having fun. And you can too, like if you, if you're brave enough. Um, and yeah, um, so finding a way to, I don't know, uh, do some kind of practical documentation because this is still very academic, I mean, not academic, but like very, technicals like uh, you can debug stuff, but there is yet no way of uh, seeing how fun title can be and how fast uh, title can be fun. Yeah, I don't know if um, it makes sense, but so to sum up, I think that um, there are a lot of weaknesses in um, this uh, documentation. The biggest one is like, how oh, does title work? I mean, I've created a page about Haskell and about all too long Haskell, but I'm not a very technical guy. Uh, so if people are, uh, there is messages in the chat. So yeah, if some people are very technical guys, if you know Haskell very well, if you know programming very well, if you're like well-versed in programming languages and all kind of computer stuff, uh, please write as much as you can in the in the documentation because it will be really really cool, and um, yeah. Also, the concept thing it's a well category because there is only one page in it, and it's what is a pattern. And I've seen in the forum like um, these days very about like topics about what is a pattern, what is a cycle, what is the difference between a cycle, and like yeah. So these kind of things can go in the documentation and. Uh, um, actually, I could talk a lot about the documentation, but it's still an ongoing project. So if you feel that you can contribute, and I, I think that almost any of you can um, do it because it's very fun. And also, um, last topic, I when I did this documentation, I thought about it as something that could be easily um, migrated from this format, like the web format, to uh, any other format because it's plain text. Like you can, it's markdown, so you could imagine a title editor with um, an embedded documentation or something like that. And it will be like really fun to have the title documentation with you anywhere. 
on like, I don't know, a Raspberry Pi or something. And uh, yep, I think that's all. Uh, if you have questions or... Uh, I have another question. <laughs> um, for the blog, is uh, contributions to the blog just done the same way as you contribute to the documentation, just pull requests on GitHub? Yeah, exactly. Everything is um, the only way to contribute is like by GitHub. You clone the thing and you touch changes and yeah. Very cool. There was, I'm, I'm, my memory's fading on it, but um, there was a couple of people who were talking about like a writer's circle. Um, and I think it sort of all fell in a heap because we didn't have anywhere to put it, but that might actually be a really good platform for that potentially. Yeah, I think it would be nice to have like um, a bit like uh, the stuff we see on the on the top lab website, but more centered around title and yeah. But um, and also like like I said, like artistic documentation, for instance, this uh, the show and tell stuff, the the talks some composer are um, giving. Like, if they have a, like a written format, they can like publish it on the documentation, and that would be like awesome, basically. Yeah, oh, super cool. Thank you for your work. Uh, I just wanted to comment. Um, documentation is often the first thing people see, and it might change like what software people choose to use. Like for me, when I was first starting with live coding, I was I was thinking about using Foxdot because I'm more of a Pythonist. I like to code in Python, but the documentation of Title was just so great to look at, and so rich and so full. And like, I think this is like such a great first impression that yeah this new revamp documentation looks beautiful yeah agreed um yeah i guess uh, this is yeah i'm not sure how many title websites we've had but um i think the wiki was nice it, it kind of made it very easy to contribute but um after a while the translate and also the translation stuff seemed very good, but I agree it turned out not to be too practical in the end because it's all designed for something like Wikipedia with millions of volunteers or contributing and like having a whole structure of people um, sort of editing the translations and things. And then if something changes, people going back and re editing and things. And so it didn't really fit, I think. Um, and the thing it replaced was, I um, can't remember how we made it. Um, I guess it was just plain HTML. It did have uh, this nice feature where it could, you'd have play buttons. So you look at the examples and click play and hear the sound. Um, so I think uh, that would be really nice to add, <laughs> um, add back. Uh, I think, um, it's uh, the new website superior in every, in every other way, apart from just uh, that one feature, I think would be nice. Um, maybe it could be done with mini title, like as in S3, or maybe it could be using this new title listener thing, which is uh, undergoing um, development and be like a server side thing. But yeah, just being able to immediately hear um, example would be great, I think. If you could actually edit it as Haskell code, that would be. Um, next level, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, sorry, that wasn't a question, was it? Uh, <laughs> I should uh, should have made a question, really. Uh, but yeah, I'm yeah, super messages. grateful for your work as I'll, well. So. I'll put inflection at the end of it, Alex. Um, yes. Anyway. Um, one question I had was where, like, where you think it makes sense for sort of higher level discussion or suggestions to happen? Like, should that happen? I mean, I know that the, you know, the GitHub repository is good for actually merging updates and such, but 
do you think the like issues or maybe a thread on the title title club would be a better place for sort of uh, i kind of like the um, the um, thread on the, on the forum because it's a um, you know, it's a nice way to talk with each other uh, yeah if, if it's more technical uh, github is good but if it's a uh, very like if you have a small edit to make to the documentation i would say that uh, the best way to do it is just like um, to submit a change and people will see if you like it. Yeah. I mean, the cool thing with uh, Git is that you can contribute very easily and I like it. And it's also why I did so much for documentation because uh, it was really easy to push my new IDs uh, into the website. So if you want to create, I know, categories or stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, the forum is nice. I, I like the forum. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, I guess we'll move on to the second half of show and tells. So we're gonna do these show and tells, then we're gonna have Clarissa give their talk, and then we'll have Cleary wrap things up and talk about some recent changes to the title cycles GitHub page. And there's gonna be an after party of sorts. So let's let's move on to show and tell. While I bring this up, uh, let's give Raph, a uh, round of applause. Okay, Dan, are you around? Yes, can you guys hear me? Yep, yep. Cool. Um, hi, everyone. I'm glad that number three Title Cycles Meetup is happening. Um, thank you for all the work that everyone's doing for the community and making the, I, I remember I, I visited the homepage again and I'm like, wow, everything's different and looks a lot better. I mean, not to say that the other one didn't look good, but you know, um, so thanks for that work. Um, yeah, I've just been having lots of fun with title cycles. Um, uh, TH4, I saw you're in here. I really appreciate your weekly streams. If I catch them live, then I'll kind of learn some new patterns. But then if I don't catch it live, then I'll go, go back and kind of learn some new things every week. Um, but you, from watching some streams, I was inspired to learn some more Super Collider because Super Collider has always been that thing that I just hit start on. And then if things are breaking, then I learn it. So this is the first time I actually put on my like, growth mindset hat and then um, learn some things. And um, something I really enjoyed about Super Collider when going through the documentation, um, actually I'm curious how many people here like actually have spent time learning Super Collider versus having it just be that thing that lives there? Like raise of hands who, who, learned, who has learned Super Collider? Cool, it's like <laughs> some thumbs down. Yeah, for me, it was always this thing that was scary. And now that I'm learning it, it's not as scary, but it is a little bit esoteric at times, as a lot of you understand. Um, that being said, when going through the tutorials, um, something that they do is like, um, you just map something to mouse X, mouse Y when you're doing synth things. And um, I was like, that's really fun. And a lot of times recently, I've been trying to make my code a lot more readable when I'm doing live performances. So something I really enjoy is like, I, I have the question, how can I also make it so the mouse is doing something? Um, if people are doing Hydra performances, sometimes they'll have like the mouse do the feedback loop. So you'll see like, they'll be able to play with the mouse and like zoom in on the code and have the code be part of the performance. Um, so I just made like a little synth and super collider that uses the mouse Y to control the, the low pass filter. So like this, like the brightness of the synth sound. Um, and then, and we can play this in a moment, but then after that, I also was like, how can I use my other synths? And I actually made a little script in Super Collider that 
listens to the mouse position and then sends that MIDI CC to Ableton. So you can actually have that control um, other synths and things. So not just tied to super collider synths. So this is just showing my like saw wave or maybe like a square wave super collider synth, but here, so I'm talking over, but um, yeah, Tyler, if you want to go ahead, we'll see if this from the start, from the start. Yeah, thanks. All right, all right. Uh, uh, so you don't hear, so anything, you don't hear let anything, let me know. Let me know. Okay. Cool. You can hear it. I don't blame you. I can't hold on. 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 I don't I can link the video, or it's on the sheet, but um, I also learned to use a, what is it, um, side chaining, which goes a long way, which, like, I kind of use Ableton to do a lot of these things. Um, I've kind of decoupled title to do the patterns, and then Ableton and other things to do sound design, now Super Collider being one of those tools. Um, but yeah, it's been a lot of fun to go down this rabbit hole of learning Super Collider and doing more sound design by code and not relying on, like, hardware synths to do that. Um, but yeah, thanks all. Um, I'm, and I also would love to see some more synths in Super Collider. I don't know a good place for sharing those, but I'm happy to share these synths as well so you can play with these in your title cycles. Yeah, thanks all. Thanks, Dan. That really resonated with me, but don't. <laughs> I hate it, but I love it. <laughs> It is a resonant low pass filter, so you're right on the money. <laughs> cool, I'll make a gist to share them, Alex. Next up is Thomas. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm Thomas, uh, aka Mr. Reason. Um, and yes, I'm currently studying, studying uh, more music theory concepts um, because uh, I tried to figure out uh, what kind of music I want to write and that's why I, I have a lot of fun to understand why I uh, sometimes like music or not. Um, yeah, and it's uh, totally fun to mess around with uh, harmony and melodies. Um, this is the first uh, part. So um, I'm using Instagram currently for um, posting some ideas and experiments and um yeah i got the uh, opportunity um to mess around with this microphone <laughs> and maybe i will uh, do some experiments with the voice uh, and drone music um yeah and instagram is the main platform for sharing some small ideas and uh, try to um produce music uh, but this is uh yeah it's this is such a rabbit hole uh, and there's so much to learn so i find it very uh, hard to finish something but um i'm working on it
can stop it. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Thomas. All right, uh, Ranga, you're up next. Yeah, OK. Um, hello, everyone. So yeah, uh, here I'm sharing uh, a latest events that uh, Paguyuban Algorithm Indonesia in collaboration with Proyecto Mutar from Peru and also and supported by October Meeting Art Music Today. So we made these events last last time called Latency Music Concert. Uh, in collaboration with like Indonesian life coders and also like Peruvian life coders, Elevo actually took part in this in this event, and we 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 put the name Latency Music Concert since we thought that we want to push uh, emphasis uh, latencies as as the main 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 things that we want to explore in this performance in, or in these events, and so yeah, this is like the whole concerts that happening in in um in june 26 <laughs> yeah so yeah you, you can you can play that tyler <laughs> maybe around middle does it start off quite yes yeah, like yes a, a lot of events planet uh you hear? right yeah is it audible no 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 sound. Oh, what? Yeah. Uh. So clearly. So yeah. About about more events planet. Yes. Actually, there is for for latency music concert. We actually like plan to also ask friends from Costa Rica. Uh. And if it, 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 it would be uh like three three different countries collaborations for this kind of events and also more <laughs> we go further i only heard the beeps <laughs> It's all latencies. There's like one more. I think I'll ask, I, I put like two links. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The other one. Yeah. This and this 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 last one. Yes. This this one also like after the latency music concerts even. This uh, this one is actually like a, a collaboration works, uh, including uh, Basasai, which is my live coding duos using live uh, tidal cycles and also Flock, uh, along with um, consists of me and Maria 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 Maya Aristia, and then a controversial player. His name is uh, Rafi Arauf, and also a visualist. Uh, her name is Alina Tafirdausi, and we 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 create this. Um, some kind of audiovisual works uh, together, and then it goes um, premiered in Skillbox, this art community uh, social so social network in India. And, yeah. That's it. Thank you. Yeah. Dan, Thomas, and Ranga, that was all 
Super cool. I'm not going to share any audio for mine. Uh, I just want to plug my repository. Just yeah, let people know about it if they don't know about it. Um, it's called Wave Clustering Workflow. It lets you sort your audio samples, like your your music sample library, by acoustic similarity, and it's uh, it's a machine learning algorithm that. Uh, I, it's like a workflow that I stitched together using Python. And it just takes a bunch of WAV files that can be in a lot of different directories. And then it, it renames them in an alphabetical order that the order corresponds to how similar the samples are. And I was able to apply it to some Roland 909 drum machine samples. And I use this as a benchmark because I knew that like the snare drums should all sound like snare drums. I knew that the crash cymbals should all be grouped together as crash cymbals. And these are the results. Like it, it successfully groups uh, the membranophones together, like the kick drums, toms. It successfully groups the snare drums together and the crashes, cymbals, claps. So I was pretty impressed with the results on drum machine samples. And then I was able to run it on almost 20,000 of my drum machine samples and I sorted them all. And it uh, works pretty well for me. And I'd love to hear other people use it, uh, like see if it works as well in your hands for other things, like maybe audio samples or maybe like synthesizer sounds. Uh, sorry, uh, vocal samples. Yeah, not audio. I didn't mean to say audio samples. But it's, yeah, it's a Python repository. Check it out. It's it's designed to be tailor made for uh, tidal cycles import through super collider commands. Um, Tyler, one of the um, one of the things I ran across uh, quite recently is Mozilla have got a um, like a massive wav pack of vocal um, samples it's, it's somewhere in the vicinity of like 60 or 80 gig of samples it's massive um and they're all they're all creative commons zero licensed and it occurred to me that that might actually be something that would be great to you know use as part of the clean samples thing that um, alex is working on but they're like they're tiny. It's like forty k, fifty k, and I I downloaded it and looked at it and I was like, oh, it's, it's too big to deal with. <laughs> so this could actually be quite useful if you can group them by by similarity. You could actually pull out a couple of packs. I reckon this would be useful. Yeah, that's awesome. I yeah, definitely want to play around with that. Yeah, I've also had some other people request like, like how does this work on chopped up vocal samples? And I've played a little bit with it. It's not as solid as, it's not as great as it is for drum machines. But I think with some parameter tuning in the code on my behalf, it would probably make it a little better for vocals. But having a lot of data would help. So thank you. Yeah, well, this, this particular pack is just, it's mostly just people speaking this as i can tell i didn't find any singing so it's not a it's not a musical pack per se all right so if anybody has any more show and tells my people who signed up late for instance uh you can put that in the chat put your links in the chat uh we'll we'll have time to go over that after we hear from clarissa So let me, let me introduce Clarissa. Clarissa is a former researcher in programming languages and has been teaching title cycles at community college recently and running a series of daily deep dives uh, in title cycles. These are videos that they record that are particularly focused on how it's possible to leverage the power of the underlying Haskell language to expand the possibilities of patterning within title cycles. And for this talk, 
Clarissa will be discussing the math used in Tidal, as well as useful functional programming tricks and ideas that they've discovered throughout the course of these daily video series. Hi, uh, everyone can hear me okay? Cool, yeah, so, um, yeah, hi everyone, yeah, I'm Clarissa Littler. Um, I'm going to share my screen now and So, uh, and I'm also going to remember to make sure I've shared sound before I go any further. Okay. So yeah, hi everyone. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to, here's sort of the rough outline of what, uh, how this talk is going to progress, right? It's going to sort of go from, you know, like talking about like my interest in title and why I started doing like uh, almost daily videos um, and why I think like sort of, doing public experiments is useful as an artistic practice. We'll talk about like some of the things I've learned and some of the, the interest there. We're also gonna talk about things that I feel like I should have done differently from the beginning and will continue to do uh, in the future. Or there's a big spoiler as to that. Um, and also some of the pragmatics of like trying to do something like this daily without burning out. And then we're gonna kind of transition into uh, a lot of the math, the stuff that's like where I've been going with things kind of in the long term um, and getting into like alternative definitions of pattern and things like that. Um, so yeah, that's that's sort of our arc. And um, so yes, uh, I'm, you know, uh, my interest in title is that I love music, but I have basically like no music training. I'm a, I'm a programmer. And, and my, my interest in the arts generally is that I'm, I'm a programmer who loves these things, but has never like, you know, kind of didn't ever see myself as an artist or a musician or any of these things, but I do see myself as a programmer. It seemed like a nice entry way into things in that regard. And I have been, I, my interest in title was because I discovered it was a thing that involved Haskell, which was a language that I've been, you know, I was using in my doctoral work and on programming language design and theory. Um, and it's a, you know, it's probably the language I'm most comfortable with and enjoy the most, just kind of partly for its, its mathiness that we'll get into. And so when um, basically like at the start of, of May, I started doing these regular, like I decided, okay, I feel like my ha uh, my title skills are sort of stagnant. Like I'd done a couple of performances and you know, those were fun, but I felt like I kept kind of returning to sort of some of the same ideas and tricks. And what I wanted to do was really like start making myself get out of my comfort zone. And you know, what's, a, you know, what's very outside of my comfort zone is, um, publicly experimenting and uh, rather than showing finished products. So like the, this playlist is now, uh, I have to slightly, okay. Um, you know, this playlist video has at this point about, I think about 26, 27 hours of title tutorials and experiments and just weird stuff I've done um, in the past like a little over two months. Um, and you can, you can tell like, you know, it doesn't quite add up to daily. I did take like a hiatus, and, uh, you know, at one point at um, late June, and then I'm taking a little bit of one now. And I'll talk about like how to, I'll talk about some of the, the pragmatics around there uh, too. Um, <clears throat> but so, you know, the kinds of stuff that I've uh, done, let's make sure I can see the chat. Um, and so I've, the, the, the kinds of things I've done here um, are like, it's a big variety. Like it's everything from um, like, hey, uh, I remember this like, like quiet interstitial moment I really liked in like, I stay on the beach. Like, okay, how do we do something like that? And then here, I'll just play like a very brief clip so you can see what I mean. Five, five, two, six. 
Right. So like, you know, something sort of, um, you know, things like that to um, try and stuff with like, say, um, super, you know, like, like, um, you know, making myself uh, try like sounds I don't normally use, like samples I don't normally use. Like, you know, doing like a bite of a, you know, like doing like a layered striation and doing like a bite on top of that whole thing, like producing sort of interesting sounds like that regard. Um, one of the, the, one of the experiments I, I did at one point that I feel like, you know, is sort of like kind of fun, like you can argue that it didn't necessarily work. And that's actually like one of the things I want to talk about here is that it's like, it's okay that things don't always work but like I decided uh, you know one you know one day and like I think I decided to try a thing of like can I make a, a ser like can I make a whole beat that's just by controlling the rhythm by layering different percentages of degrade by you know right and it's worth trying let's see where do I and so like that's it's that's the kind of thing that's like sort of I think sort of interesting like to take randomness and to see what you can do with that and it's it's fun uh and you know there's a lot of other like sort of things I have played around with uh my own like spoken word and poetry that I've I've done like uh, doing granular synthesis on my own recordings. And so for a, example, like um, here, I, um, I'll, I'll play the beginning of this and cause it's, I think it sort of ends up being fun. Um, and like is, so for example, I'm, you know, start. And like this is this is this is I just chopped up a a poem I read out loud um, and the and you know heck why not why not actually share the the poem itself nihilism in the end times we're all prophets of a dead god damn we're empty in intention and becoming more hollow by the hour i don't know when we stop believing that we had a future but i i think too many are proud of seeing the end at hand of sneering that they're not surprised but when we survive ten thousand years humanity's lease renewed birth by birth who did you help live and so it's like i mean that's completely unrecognizable chopped up right and that's but then also there's been a lot of these videos that are like, let's write a bunch of Haskell code. And for example, like there's a, you know, one of the early, you could probably all hear that. I gesture when I talk and sometimes I smack things. So if you heard like a big clatter, that was me hitting a plate that was on my desk. Um, I like to keep it classy. Uh, and so, um, the, the, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, Alex, like, I actually have an entire thing that I want to do with even more, like, spoken word plus, plus title, like, actually layering things more, like, a, I have a long monologue that I'm planning to do, but anyway, um, and so, like, one of my early videos was, like, okay, let's do some stuff with, uh, like, Lindenmeyer, uh, systems, and then, like, let's show how to, like, take a bunch of functions and do like mappings to change like like basically like turn it into the right format and then so you can um you know basically I have like a whole uh bit of parsing code that you know yeah like it, it, I have things that use read and then at the end of the the which allows you to take a string and turn it into a data type and so we can do that for a lot of stuff I use parse b uh I use parse bpe to to like take a strain and turn it into like a pattern and then to um, like poly sequence it uh, so that like basically we can make like these just giant ugly patterns at the end of the day, um, which is, let's see, like take 10, okay, 
that's just me explaining it. Let me see if you like, yeah, okay. Those are just the explanations. Um, but yeah, like I did these long videos doing like, okay, let's talk about code, or like code, let's talk about Haskell programming, let's talk about like what map and fmap do. Um, also did, you know, stuff, I've also done stuff like, um, And, uh, I did not. Oh, right here. Uh, the so like a short video like explaining how to just define data types and basically we define a what is secretly the maybe type and then talk about how to use it to create um, like do choices um, by yep uh, and so we have a you know we we show how to like make a monadic action using the fact that pattern is a monad, you know, which is something we're going to get into more in just a couple of minutes. And, you know, make a, uh, make a function, like a, make a monadic action in pattern that actually uses a choice inside it where it tests to see if there's a, you know, like it asks for a random number in each time slice and then it's uh, checks to see what where the what the random number is and then returns a different uh, data data structure that can be used to you can discriminate against to actually like have different different sounds so here I think let me see just oh right 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 And um, the, the idea is like, you know, you can just put that inside the, the hash operator because like the output of this whole thing is going to be like a, a the, the output of the whole thing is going to be something of the, the right type. Um, and so there's, there's all these things like that that I've done um, and they're kind of, uh, and yet like there's also uh, one of the things that has been fun about this and where I think it's kind of an interesting artistic practice is like, if you watch these, you'll find there's a lot of places I make mistakes, like all over the place, right? I not only make a ton of mistakes, but also like I have moments where I, that I leave in the videos, no matter how much it's like stresses me out on some level, where I have to sit there and talk out the, the thing I'm confused about. And I actually find this like really good I find it it's something I kind of recommend to people. Like I think I would love love to see more people kind of go through this uh, process. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Th4 said audience as programming doc. Yeah, kind of right. Except that it's a thing that other people can witness and maybe like learn from. And speaking of wanting to to learn from, one of the things that I feel like I have only sort of like recently realized I should start doing. And I do think everyone, if you want to do something like this, do this from the beginning, is to have a GitHub repo of all your files. And I recommend doing having like a different file for like every day kind of situation, and which I was already doing. So that made this easier. But then also, um, <clears throat> but then also actually like, put them somewhere that people can access, right? So because the, the final file and then the video of the process are like complementary pieces of, of data. And I think it's important to have both of them. And uh, so let me see, I've got seven minutes. So cool, I do have time to talk a bit about like some of the stuff I, I've been doing uh, lately. So I've been working with a composer. This is this is the part I, I say about like, um, uh, of this is the part uh, I was saying about surprise John Cage. You know earlier in, in the chat, is that so um, a composer I've been working with who's like really interested in like creating like interesting percussive patterns, but doesn't isn't a programmer, doesn't know title. Like uh, he and I have been working on stuff inspired by early John Cage pieces where essentially the, the, the piece is generated by thinking of it as like wheels where the spokes are like a, a particular pattern. And then what you do is every 
repetition, you rotate the, the wheel left or right, and then you still kind of start at the, the top of the wheel and then circle around clockwise. And, um, and so like I've written now, what you might be thinking is that sounds suspiciously like the way iter works. And it is ish. This is all like a more generalized version of iter. And so like, I, I basically wrote, you know, I called the function like iter list and it takes a list and then has the possibility, there's a whole bunch of code here. And in fact, I think at the beginning here, you can see, uh, and again, this is on GitHub now, so you can you know, check it out. But like, I have a whole bunch of functions at kind of various levels of abstraction, um, building up to like a thing that has a very clean interface at the end, which is just this iter list. And then iter list prime that has a kind of a, I call it like a skip distance where you're like deciding how many over you, how many turns of the wheel you go. And so, you know, I use that to do some, some melodies and see how they sounded because the idea of this was that you could take um, the same sort of ideas and then do some transformations on them and have them rotating at different speeds relative to each other and get variation. So like, well, here's just a brief sample of that. And this is like work in progress. This is just a little demo of like all the code I had written to this point uh, a few days ago. So that's just, you know, like a tiny sample. Um, but yeah, like I end up building like a bunch of, in this video, by the end, there's a bunch of wheels that have all kind of like gotten layered on top of themselves. And in order to create like interesting, you know, sort of these interesting layered rotations. Um, and that was pretty fun. Um, and so here, like just briefly, like towards the end. And so like, it's sort of like interesting ways, because this is about like fundamentally about the question of how do you compose for live coding, which in, is going to involve like a lot of interesting questions related to like graphical scores and things like that. And again, like I'm not a music background person, I'm a programmer. So I like talking to musicians about like, okay, if you have something that's built from like all these like patterns and repetitions and loops like what does what does describing composition for that mean and we've we have like a whole project on that that's uh in theory going to be done by like around the end of the month um on you know he's written a score and i'm going to interpret the score and we're, we're going to do a performance um but yeah like there's a lot of there's just a lot of code that went into this um but then the neat thing is once you start doing this kind of thing super regularly, you start realizing that you have, um, you, you start realizing that you're running into a lot of interesting questions uh, about title that you, you didn't really realize you had. Um, so for example, like I hit a point where I, om I wanted to do something like um, integrate, I wanted to do something like integration over pattern um, you know, to treating it almost like a signal, right? Like in doing like integration over, over a signal. And except the problem is, is that that doesn't actually make sense for pattern in part because of like pattern is sort of like, that's like an indefinite integral, right? Like it's sort of like you're adding an infinite number of things at like arbitrary time slices. And it sort of doesn't make sense to think of that as converging to anything, right? There's the, the interface of, um, the interface of pattern doesn't really like being treated that way. And, you know, I believe in treating data the way its interface well, wants to be treated. But so then what we did, um, what, what, what I was doing the other day is um, like, I wrote, I just 
quickly, I had an idea of like, okay, let's try using state, uh, let's use monadic transformers. And so then I, I did this whole video showing how to like write code uh, of the a state transformer on top of pattern. And then that use that to basically uh, do a, like integration over a chunk of time. And it's kind of fun, right? But it's interesting, you like you start, the more you start like pushing yourself to be like, okay, I wanna do these weird things, the more like you realize there's a lot you don't necessarily like understand yet. And um, so like, like for example, here, um, things like, uh, oh, it's, it's still me explaining. Uh, yeah, okay more like sonically complex things Ugh. okay should be fun uh the the i should have marked the exact time slice i had go but like it's the idea is like we're actually um selecting samples by integrating over a, uh, like sampling a sine wave in a chunk of time and then adding it, all the results together and it works the way you think it should um given that these sine waves go from zero to one and then so where I am right now is the next few videos I'm going to do are about like alternative definitions of pattern and gain into the monadic structure of these things because like not that I want to suggest replacing pattern in the code base. It's actually that I think it'd be really cool to have a different set of um, I think it'd actually be really cool to have a different set of abstractions for doing sort of algebraic reasoning. Like for example, like if I switch back over here for a second, um, if I were to, uh, you know, do something like, uh, you know, and then, and then, let's see, and then, and then some like, um, Like if I were to do something that had like a bunch of different like pieces together in a pattern, right? And then like add them all together, right? This is relying on the monadic structure of pattern because um, what, what we're essentially doing is like anytime you add two patterns together, um, you are doing something like this, which is, it's actually like a monadic action within the pattern monad that's like, you know, taking events out of the first pattern and out of the second pattern, then combining them with the plus. And then, um, like, if you add a complex thing together, like, e even something like this that I just randomly made up, like, I don't know about you, but I can't just look at that and then tell you where all the, all the, the events are going to be in time. And I think it'd be really neat to write like a impractical list-based pattern. Or it's basically like pairs of times with, you know, uh, maybe of the event type, and then write the monadic structure for that and see how many different like pattern monads you can make out of lists and then try to match the algebra of those to the algebra of the code base as it exists because there are a bunch of algebraic laws. And I remember one of the very first things I did when I was learning title is uh, I started asking questions about like, okay, like, do we know that these different versions of join actually obey the monadic like laws of like the basically like associative properties and stuff. And it turns out the unwrap and squeeze join both do. And then, you know, inner and outer join because they throw away structure sort of unsurprisingly don't, but but both unwrap and squeeze do. And so there's actually like, we know there's, there's multiple choices of monadic structure on top of pattern, like that would allow you to have like different, like it's still like the math doesn't tell you that some things are more um, valid than others in that regard. So I, where I've been wanting to go and I have a bunch of notes on now start posting videos and giving definitions is alternative, like, like sort of easy to understand versions of pattern that I'm going to use to like 
get some intuition for how like all the choices in the code and how those things work and figure out if there's other laws about how patterns should be and maybe get sort of creative about like could pattern you know like could you do versions of pattern that are like tree structures or have other like weird definitions and would those enlighten us about like what what uh, reasoning about patterns could be and how to build intuition for them so yeah that's kind of where i'm going and where i've been and um and the last thing i was going to say is you know like these videos have been almost daily and they're going to continue being like an average of five days a week and i wanted to plug like a thing i use for this which is like I literally use a commitment device to make sure that I am keeping track of things and you can see that I'm on an explicit break right now, but then it'll go to like six a week commitment after that. And that'll be pretty, that's, that's how I'm like keeping myself honest about things because uh, keeping a streak alive just for the streak's sake isn't like helpful when you're trying to be creative. Um, but also like you wanna make sure that you're sticking with it all. And so, yeah, that's kind of my overview of things. And um, I went a little over time, but not, not horribly so. Um, and yeah, that's, so thank you. That was, a, that was kind of a scattershot explanation of a bunch of stuff I've been working on and where I'm going with it. And so, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much, Clarissa. Are there any questions? Um, I actually have a kind of quite a question. Uh, going back to the the uh, the the poem stuff, um, Clarissa, in your opinion, what do you think it would take uh, structurally to get some sort of like text to speech? synthesizer integrated into title? Ooh, that's, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I mean, like, if you can have anything that would take, could be, I mean, I mean, I'm guessing like the way you would have to do it, like this isn't something I've, I've, I've done, but I'm guessing the way you would have to do it is to um, have some external thing that can, and maybe write some wrapper code that can, you know, have it respond to like OSC signals and like pack the text you want to read inside the OSC signal, and then um, and then have it respond to that. And that would probably involve like taking a TTS thing and then wrap, you know, wrapping it with like extra code. That's my guess. Uh, given the fact that I haven't actually tried that, it's a cool idea though. Larissa, I'm about. Um, I'm short on. I'm short on time in general, and I'm about. I, I'm guessing 50 videos behind you right now, and this this list is growing. Are you planning to stop any time? <laughs> oh, I feel like oh, I need to catch up. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, no, no. I think I'm going to be uh, continuing to go, and apparently, uh, uh, Alex has done some some. Uh, TTS stuff. That's awesome. I really want to look at this later. Um, and but anyway, side note. Yeah, no, I'm I'm hope to keep this up for a while. But I mean, it is actually a good point. Like at some point, if you're putting out like content like this, I think you owe the audience a kind of a digest of it in order to like not be completely inaccessible. And that's something I've been wondering about too. Like, how do I balance um, making a lot of stuff but then still making it accessible because it's like at some point it could very easily end up being like a library without a card catalog you know like it's just like oh there, there's a everything you want could be in there uh no way you can find it but it's there like that's not helpful that's not useful and so i've wondered um okay cool there's uh, sorry i just saw in chat there are multiple people who've done some tts hackery which is awesome um and but yeah so i guess that's that's my answer is like i probably owe like as a part of doing this and part of community building i think i owe people like 
like I would say like a even just a monthly digest of like here's the things that were done and like written in text as like a blog post or something that people can just see. Yeah, so I, I think I was the wrong word, but um, I'm, I'm already incredibly grateful for the content you're putting out. I think it's like, like for me, it's actually, um, I'm seeing a learning path, um, which I, is just amazing. I'm, I'm really grateful. So if, if you did a digest, I would be super grateful for that too. It's, um, but the, yeah, I was definitely not the right word to use. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's, a, uh, it's, oh, you didn't say anything wrong. Uh, Cause it's actually a thing where it's like, you never want to be like, um, like, so Stephen Wolfram infamously produced like a, a ton of mathematical results with cellular automata. And then when people do other work, he tries to go, uh, excuse me, I already did that. Like look in this giant, like set of files. And it's like, that's not helpful, man. Like, and I never, like, I think it's really easy if you're producing a bunch of stuff to like accidentally do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, fantastic, thank you. I just thought I'd I'm super excited about um, um, so I'm getting deep into the units of tidal and seeing what alternatives there are for these um, representations. Um, it was, I mean, just seeing these different forms of monadic structures appear with squeeze join and everything um, just kind of emerge from the tidal code based almost just as um, trying to understand it as it emerged. <laughs> so it's uh, nice and I think there's alternative alternatives is um, really exciting too. Um, I have been thinking for a couple of days that I'd like to just have a session um, where I just try and write as much title as I could in two hours from scratch, see um, how far I got and also what how different it was from the actual title and um, see what different things happened like even just um, what would happen if the if pure wasn't um, an event that repeated once a cycle but was a continuous um, value for example how different that would make it um, because I, I think this mini notation is really nice and um, sort of with rhythm thing inside the double quotes but um, behind that there's this other world and there's a lot of other possibilities about how um, how patterns can be structured and um, we're so used to thinking of it as being these sort of contiguous events but there's so many other possibilities so yeah I'm super excited about what you came up with Clarissa and um, again I don't have a question sorry but just encouragement oh but thank you <laughs> and also oh my gosh please I would love to watch you do a stream of just like writing title code like that would be so cool Alex is yeah. most unpopular live stream yet <laughs> Alex McLean live codes and it's not anything anybody expected Uh, are there any other questions or comments? And if not, uh, I'll just stop share and hand hand control of the stream back over. We've got a technical question. Um, so yeah. it, was, it was cool to hear you talk about integrating patterns. And I feel like it's more common to differentiate them, like take the derivative or the difference. Like there's a function called timeline that was in the GitHub at one point. I don't know if it made it into the, the main branch, but uh, so I guess I, ne I never thought about integrating patterns. Um, what are you adding up in them? Like, how would that how would that work? Oh, so it had to do with like wanting to have things that were the initial inspiration was wanting things that were random, but only could sh like but where the end result could only change by a small amount and not like with the shape of like Perlin noise. Like that's, that has a different shape to it than I was thinking. I was thinking uniform randomness, but with, um, you know, 
like the idea of, of it being w but uniform randomness, but with the, the idea of it only like the total changing only in just like a little bit each time. And this was because I was trying to like come up with like random traversals of shapes, like potentially more complicated than just a circle it had to do with the project I was doing with that, that composer. And so like what all that's really happening here, it, it's kind of, I don't know, it's, it feels like kind of hacky, but this was the idea of like, I just, I just came up with this and the proof of concept did it, which was the idea of like, you take a certain number of samples that you want, and then you want the resolution of them, hence R, of this pattern. And then what you do is like, you literally like scan the original pattern uh, at different points in time per cycle. And then you grab those and then you just create a, some total of it basically. Yes, in theory, yeah, I should, I should weight that by like the resolution size. Like this was, this was just like, was, was the fastest mm. thing I could write that's a proof of concept. And then so, um, so then like you can think of, of using the, the state transformer here so that what it's doing is it's at every single event of the original pattern, it then like looks at a window around that and then adds all of those up so that at each, at the, the same time, at the, basically at the same point, it'll, it should have like the same kind of like final structure as the original pattern, but then like its values will be added up. That was the idea. Cool. Thank you. Oh yeah, uh, Alex correctly calling me out in the chat for not being super accessible in the way I was talking about that. All right, any, any last questions for Clarissa? Let's give a round of applause. Lots of people muted. <laughs> okay, next up, Cleary is going to talk about new changes to title cycles on the GitHub page. Yeah. I should have an intro for Cleary. Uh, Cleary is a musician, an avid title cycles helper, and coder who hosts regular estuary jams and has contributed immensely to this this latest meetup meetup number three so all, all the all the smoothness <laughs> of this meetup is 100 percent cleary's uh additions so take it away Thank you. Oh, so um we had a we had a thought after the last meetup that it'd be nice to to do a um a change log for I just quickly share a change log for what's going on in the title verse and to provide a summary of um, of what's what's happening and so that you know there's there's an awful lot going on and just trying to make it a little bit accessible um, to people to get a not dissimilar to what Clarissa was proposing for her, um, for her digest so I put something together this month to see how it goes and I'd be super keen for feedback <clears throat> um, so I started out going, okay, well, I'll just like do a, do a summary of Git log changes. Um, and it very quickly snowballed. So apologies, I'm going to race through this pretty quickly. I'll share the link. Um, and yeah, let's go in. So this is where it started, GitHub highlights. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that I'm quite interested in and that, that's been going on is a, a clean samples project. Um, which is just like dirt samples, but we know where all the samples came from. We know that they're all licensed appropriately and there's a bunch of stuff has gone into there already. Um, so that's a good one to check out um, if you're in the market for samples that you are allowed to use without having to fudge them up too badly. Um, one of the small, um, uh, small things I've got going on in the background is, is some chord stuff. Um, there's a there's a thread and a to do list. There's a big pile of things that I'm working on. 
I've made a couple of pull requests. Um, the uh, I'll let you let you investigate that yourself if you if you're interested. Um, but yeah, this is basically my little project to try and learn how to a bit better. Um, but yeah, please please contribute to the the discussion thread if you if you're interested in following that through. But a lot of it is just about bringing some um, interesting features in chords wise. Um, Matthew kaney has been doing a whole heap of stuff. He's here, I think. Um, but yeah, he mentioned he, he dropped a little link in the meet last week about the OSC API for muting and unmuting a stream. Um, I, I've been playing with that for like the last since then, and it's it's great fun. You can use your MIDI controllers to do stateful, you know, muting and unmuting just using um, note buttons, which is super cool. Um, control UI changes. I don't. I don't know specifically what that is about. Um, I'm sure Matt can give us a, a very brief rundown on that, perhaps afterwards. Uh, NDRBRT is just a is just a powerhouse of, of small fixes, um, just constantly going in. So he's been doing a whole bunch of um, yeah, just shorthand multipliers, things making things work as as you expect, um, which is super cool. Google Summer of Code project. Martin was in the chat earlier, but I think he left. Um, he's built. I, I didn't. I, I couldn't get a handle on on exactly what this was about um, when he started. Um, but it's a title cycles API and editor plugin is the description. Develop the proof of concept for a title API and editor plugin that allows new interactions with title and opens it up to a broader user base. Um, my my TLDR. And I hope this is somewhat accurate. I, I did run it by him first, is to create a package title with a strict set of essential title dependencies, um, excluding GHC, which causes a significant percentage of support issues. So the idea is that you can make title easier to easier to install for hopefully for every platform. Um, where it's up to, he's pretty much completed the packaging and distribution side for Win Windows and Linux. Um, it's all automated through GitHub Actions. Um, once again, NDRBRT um, deserves a plug here. The, the interface needs some work, but he's already got um, he's already got stuff going into Atom, which is super exciting. Um, and it's in the Atom releases. So it's it's worth having a look at that because yeah, you can simplify the whole process, um, which is just amazing. I, I know I know how complex it is, I try and try and maintain it a bit. Uh, forum highlights. So as you can see, this this snowball that was like, okay, there's there's so much going on. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to expand my my change logs. I'm gonna pull out a couple of things from the forums as well, which I think are worth noting. Um, Alex talking about the future of title, um, and that goes back to the Open Collective um, stuff that he presented earlier. Um, the hack your door thread is pretty exciting. Um, I think we've Got some discussions going with um, Francesco Corby to see if he can do a um, do a neat presentation for us on that. Um, but specifically, controlling Ableton directly from Title Cycles without Super Collider um, or Super Dirt, I don't think. Uh, Crash and Booth made a punch to scale function, which is basically a way to take a series of notes and fix them to a to a given scale. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty uh, rough, but it's pretty interesting, and it's um, that's you know um, not dissimilar to like I see um, some possible uh, parallels with with Clarissa's um, the, the addition of all the notes. Um, this could actually be a, a way to do addition with uh, with some diatonic um, outcomes. <clears throat> Uh, title plus Euro rack set up question. Somebody's working on a minified Euro rack with title control um, or Yegu. Um, I can't pronounce usernames, let's face it. Uh, Lucy JP was um, had some multi channel questions because she was using title in a 16 speaker spatial sound lab, which sounded awesome. Uh, software instruments with custom hardware interfaces. TGI Rod has made a like a it's like a kids interface with some some switches and some LEDs and, and knobs, and you can do title control, which is really basic 
um, this really basic interface, which um, as an educational tool, I think is is pretty amazing for kids. It's pretty amazing, and just for the for the pure interest of doing it, it's pretty amazing. Um, so lots of fun there. And Albert made a he's, he's using a, a 1984 Epson PX8 to um, I, th I think to execute title code. There's a there's a Raspberry Pi in there somewhere. I'm unsure of the whole thing, but it's <laughs> it just looks super cool, super fun. Um, so there you go. Take a um, a laptop from 1984 and and do title and stuff. All right, so it snowballed further. I was like, well, we should probably talk about you know things that are going on in the <clears throat> in the performance space because that's kind of what title is is for. It's a it's a live coding platform. Um, so the international conference on live coding um, is coming up. Alex has put some. Um, Put some information on the on the forum and some proposals. There's a homepage. Um, please check that out. Uh, I very very quickly smashed this one into it while we were going. The Algo Ray futures. I'll give you a um, Alex and uh, Hello Cat Food another plug for that one. New music. So it got worse. So I was like, well, people have been releasing stuff. I should find that. <laughs> so I went looking for music that people have released. Here's a bunch of albums. This is all within the last um, within the last uh, period between the last meetup and now. Um, stuff coming in. A um, couple of highlights in here: Internet Recluse by Kindome, um, Taxis, Millions of Dead Fascists came and posted on the on the Discord and said, "Oh, you know, I've used Title for some of this stuff, and it's it's super cool." Um, Will Rinkoff, C. Robbo's released a bunch of stuff. Um, the super dub um, set from Super Peach Man is just like just classic dub stuff, and it's just track after track after track after track. It's all it's all fantastic. Um, so yeah, lots of lots of good stuff in there, um, and they're all linked to the equivalent band camps and stuff. So please check that out. And that's it. Um, I will do a quick shout out. Um, Totally, like, like, really, really getting quite tendential here. But um, Ivan and um, CMDSD Mali, who presented last week, got married. So that was exciting too. All right, that is my very, very quick run through. Almost at six thirty, two and a half hours in. Uh, yes, Kit. All those Bandcamp releases are linked in the presentation. Get rid of that guy, do the stop. There we go. Cool. So yeah, please please check out that present that um, slide thing. I've tried to put a bunch of stuff in there. I'm sure I've missed there is so much going on. I'm sure I've missed a lot of things. Um, if there's anything you'd specifically like me to cover off, I would be happy to. Um, but I've had a lot of fun going digging and finding all these things. So yeah, thank you. That was so cool. I love the format. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, there's so much stuff being done all the time. We gotta like cover it, you know. I, th I think it like it, it's important to to try and do a digest because keeping tabs on everything and, and not everybody's where we're a fairly modest group, I think, and people don't necessarily like to like to shout about the things that they're doing. So it does require somebody to shout about it. So I, I guess I see that as my <laughs> a little platform for doing it. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's about it. We've um, yeah, we've, we've done a lot. I appreciate everyone coming out and joining us. Tyler, over to you. Well, just thanks everyone for attending and participating. This one was a lot of fun. I, I think we we're supposed to have like an after party or something like a a jam session? What's going on? Is that still a thing? 
it's a good question. We've talked about it before, um, but then just like ran way over time. Um, yeah, I'm keen. So if anybody wants to join us, I'll try the link. Um, it's the weekend jam channel. Password, so in the chat. I'm not going to have a noodle on there if anybody wants to join me. Yeah, I, I think I'll pass my turn tonight. That's all right. It's getting late. No problem at all. I'll hang around. If anybody wants to join me, you're more than welcome. If not, that's all good. I'm going to go and have some breakfast. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you guys. Talk to you next time. Yeah, thanks a lot, everyone. And uh, have a good day or evening. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thanks everyone. Good to see you all. I'll maybe join in S3 for a minute or two. Sounds good, Tom. See you there. Thanks, folks. I'm going to announce myself. I, I won't be able to join the, the jam session, but uh, I will leave this, this meeting on. And I'll stop the recording now. <laughs>